how has the preparation been this week? Uh, yeah, very decent. Um, we've been able to get plenty of work done this week. Uh, some, certainly some aspects of our game that uh, we're, we're needing to address. But I do think early on in the season, as we are, there are always going to be certain aspects of, of the team and, and maybe the setup that you need a little bit of uh, shifting and, and possibly tinkering. Um, and we're, we're no different to anyone else. So, yeah, very positive week. The guys are in good spirits and, you know, we're, uh, we're looking forward to the weekend. Uh, we're going to transition to the Zoom, Drake. Feel free to ask your question, and then if you have one follow-up, feel free to go ahead as well. Thanks, Christina. Um, Gary, uh, good to talk with you. Uh, before uh, we get to the soccer court, I definitely want to ask, um, obviously, with the horrific and tra tragic events of Monday morning, I'm, I'm curious about um, how that affected the, the team collectively and individually but also the staff as well and, and yourself. And how did that uh, affect you guys um, both one day and throughout the week? Look, I, I, I think the terminology you're using and, and we've heard many times tragic, um, just horrific situation. Um, with, you know, being a, being a parent with three children. Um, personally, and I'm sure there's plenty of other people in the same situation. You can't help but, you know, have, you, you, your heart go out to the people that have been affected by this, the families and, and uh, you know, the, the, uh, the friends of people close to, to what has gone on. Um, you know, I'm no politician and uh, I, I come from a, a, a society and a country that, that doesn't carry guns. so. You know, I, I can't speak about any of those things, whether you should or shouldn't have guns, but what I do know is that it makes absolutely no sense to me that people can be walking around with machine guns um, anywhere in society. I don't understand why anyone needs that. I get, having lived here for a long time, that, um, that there is a part of the Constitution that enables people to carry guns and to, to look after themselves, so I get that and I understand that. But there is, it would seem to me, there is a huge difference between having a handgun um, or something that's going to be a protection for you and a machine gun that can do the sort of damage that we've not only seen here this week that's destroyed lives. You know, obviously people have lost their lives and it's destroyed many others. It's affected a huge amount of other people that are wrapped around that. Um, and we've seen it so many times. And for, for the people that are in power not to do anything about that, is, is I, I truly don't understand. I don't. Yeah, Gary, um, and just to switch slightly to um, obviously one of the players, one of the leaders for your team, Dax, Dax McCarty. This was a week that, of course, has been in great anticipation, uh, not just for him uh, as a Nashville player, but him being a part of MLS, uh, reaching a big milestone of, of 400 starts. Only Kyle Beckerman and Chad Marshall have more. Um, I'm curious for you over the past, you know, this season and the past three seasons, you have a story, um, you know, something that in one of your favorite moments from Dax being on the field, um, game day stories, some of your favorite moments from uh, coaching him or coaching against him uh, over the course of your career. Yeah, I look, first of all, uh, Dax was a fantastic signing for this club as a person, uh, a character and a player in, in those early years. So uh, I've been you know, almost blessed to, to be around him for the period I have. I know that he was going into his early 30s when he came here, but Dax is a bit of a Peter Pan, you know. He's, he never seems to get any older. He never seems to look any older. Um, he's still playing at a fantastic level, and, and he's still got the same fire in his belly. So, um, you know, when you look at professionals in, in the modern era, I, I think Dax is one of those guys that you look at that should have been born probably 20 years ago, who, who loves the game so much, who'll do anything to be on the field, is, is always fighting and shouting and hollering in training. and uh, It's been great to, to have around. I mean, look, two things that, that jump immediately to mind for me. Um, we played against Dallas, obviously, in 2010, when, uh, when Dax was in that Dallas midfield against us. And I remember him being an absolute dynamo on the night. Um, really influential player in an incredibly tight game. Um, 
and you know I, I feel a little bit bad that we were the team to beat him to that championship that he deserves. Um, I don't think about it for too long, of course, but um, you know he, he, uh, he certainly on the night in, in his display deserved more than than he, he eventually got. And the other one was was a position that you rarely see him in, um, and that was towards goal. Uh, he's at the moment that he scored against Miami um, in in that playoff, that first playoff game we had at Titan Stadium. And it was almost like the Red Sea parting as he uh, drove through the middle of the field and finished. And I know he had scored goals, but he finished as if it was just something so nonchalant and it happened every, every weekend of, of the year. So two very, very nice memories. One, I'm sure, it, it'll, it won't, I don't talk about too much. That's it for me, Christina. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. We're going to transition to Team Sullivan team. Yeah, Gary, um, I don't know, I, you didn't really touch on it in, uh, in your answer to Drake's question about it, but has, has your team's mentality seemed to be okay since, since the event Monday, uh, since the shooting on Monday? And um, did you have to say anything to your guys? You know, obviously they know that you support them, but, but, but some kind of words of, of consolation and things like that, uh, that something happens like this in their community. Well, look, a couple of things. I, d I don't think... If you're that close to the event, um, when it happens somewhere else, it feels like it's it's just not close enough at hand. Even though you're going to be affected if you've got children, and you know you, you certainly if you've got a heart at all, you you're feeling the emotion or or, or or some of the emotions that those people are going through. Um, as far as it being 15 minutes away from this training ground. There was there was some chatter as we came off of, of the training ground on the day. Um, there wasn't an awful lot of conversation um, on Monday, and people went their own way. I think I think more in shock than anything else um, that something as 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 terrible as as that could happen that close by, and and you know probably wondering most people you know if there was anyone that they knew had, had been affected by that and close to that. I haven't said anything to the group. I know that, um, and, and are grateful for the people that support um, the team in some of those uh, more more sort of emotional senses. We have um, uh, Greg Joyner, who's the uh, who's the chaplain here, and he's he's very good with the group, um, supporting the group in 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 a more of emotional way as I've said um, and we've also got uh, you know, Stephen James and, uh, and and Brad Stinson who support the group from a, a purely um, a sports psychology standpoint and I think those guys have been able to, to touch base with the players I know that we're um, we're going to be wearing armbands at the weekend and that the club in general of, I think, reached out to try and find out what way we can support or help those families um, in, in such a difficult time. So it, it's just not an easy scenario for anyone when you're, when you're this close at hand. And, and I do honestly think, I know I keep harping on about it, but when you've got children yourself, uh, I, I, I find it difficult to understand uh, uh, that uh, somebody can do that. I, re I really do. Uh, not not a, the easiest transition in the world, uh, but soccer. Um, what have you seen um, in the early stages of the season uh, from your opponent at the weekend? And then um, what is the, the status of Randall Layall's uh, recovery from his injury? Yeah, I mean, disappointed, of course, to lose the game at the weekend and, again, having time to evaluate what went on. Um, We've been beaten 1-0 by one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference right now. They've started incredibly well. Um, and we become a bit of a notch on their, uh, on their success. But I found myself looking at some of the positives out of the first half. Wondering, you know, what a goal would have done for us to get ourselves in front in those very, very tight games. 
the team that scores first can put themselves not, not necessarily in a, a position that's um, you know unassailable, but they, they certainly strike the first call and, and now make life incredibly difficult, which they did for us. Um, there was a penalty call that I've looked back on and I'm still bemused as to why there was, there was no VAR or, or contact with a referee from what I can gather. Bemused. Um, and those things can make a, a real difference in such a tight game. And we've now lost 1-0 to two very good teams. Um, lessons to be learned. Uh, still a, a decent start, but what we do is we go to an Orlando group now that um, themselves have, have started in a, a very decent note. We know how difficult it can be there in Orlando. They've made a lot of changes themselves in the off-season and added some what looks like some really bright talent to the group, some bright young talent as well. So it will be no different, I would suspect, to any other game that we have to play away from home. We're going to have to be at our best. But I do certainly believe there's enough good in the group that I'm seeing to warrant earning points more often than not this year. And no doubt we'll grow and develop as these games go on. And Randall's uh, recovery? Sorry. Um, yes, he's been out on the field this week. Uh, he won't be available this weekend. He's still at that point where he's trying to get enough work done to get him up to match speed or to uh, a high level of, of training capability. But, uh, you know, I do think that this week will be quite instrumental as to whether or not he'll be available next weekend. He's certainly in a much better spot for next weekend than he was, you know, looking at... Uh, the start of this week for the Orlando game. Go ahead. Gary, um, a couple of things from me here. Um, you know, when you look at the, at the um, starting 11 that uh, um, Coach Pareja put on play at the, at, the, at the win in Philadelphia last weekend, eight of those players, eight of those starting players are, are all foreigners. I mean, players that come from Uruguay, Brazil, Argentina and Sweden. Uh, I wonder if that brings a, a, a different challenge to, to the planning of, of, of your game for this weekend. And, and the, the last one really has to do with Dax. Uh, I do remember uh, one an anecdote that we all remember very well because it happened at the press conference. And I want to ask you about this. Uh, Dax came in and, and started saying that the things that the things were the, the way that things were going at the time were not good enough. And then the team had to do something else. That he was kind of a, upset at the time. I think you remember that time. Is that is there a card that you might still have to play one time if, if things were going south at, at any time? Uh, being Dax, who, who he is. Yeah, look, that that's part of his character, and and I think that's why we you know we. Uh, we all warm to him so much. He's a great competitor. And he's been a very good leader, a very good captain for this group. And he continues to be um, somebody who, who keeps others accountable, sets terrific standards. Um, and for the younger guys in the group, you know, he's, he's somebody to look up to for sure. Look, I hope we don't get to that point, of course. Nobody wants to be in a position where, you know, you're, uh, you're having to... You're having to be negative or aggressive about what's going on and, and why we're not improving or, or getting the results we're after. Um, we're, we're a long way from that, that, that is for sure. There's too many encouraging things that are going on within the group. Um, there's, there's so much energy and belief in the group that, like I say, we're, we're, we're a long way off of that. But should we need to? I know the guy to go to, that, that is for sure. Um, as far as Orlando are concerned, Yes, of course, you know, new players come into the league. Um, they come from environments and teams outside of MLS. They can take a little bit of time to understand their traits and, and some of their strengths and weaknesses. Um, we have a reasonable body of, of work to look at. What, what I can say is they look far more dynamic than they probably have done in the last year or two. Um, some players that look like they certainly want to threaten the back line, beyond the back line, and uh, you know they'll be, I'm sure, o over, overly pleased with uh, the result that they got down in Philadelphia la last week. It'll give everyone in that group a lift. 
but it's never easy there. It doesn't matter whether they come off the back of a win, a loss, you know, they're trying to recover or they're trying to keep a run going. It's tough there. They're a good side. Um, they've proved over the course of, of time since Oscar's been there that they're very competitive. And we've had some real, real, real humdinging games with them, you know. Some, you know, I remember a terrific result in the playoffs where we, I think we won 3-1 at home. Um, and we lost, you know, uh, an absolute nail-biter in the, play in the um, Open Cup on penalties. And they went on to win it. Um, so there's a little bit of history there as well. All good, but challenging nonetheless. Yeah, it's been good. I think whenever you come off a couple of difficult results, I think everyone is just ready to move on to the next one. I think everyone's really sharp, ready to go. And honestly, we can't wait to board the plane and just get down there and get the 90 minutes underway. We are going to open the floor for questions. Dre, go ahead. Yeah, Jack, uh, good to see you again. I uh, was just curious as I spoke with uh, Gary earlier about obviously a Monday morning and, and what that tragic and horrific impact it had, not just on uh, a certain part of the, of the community, but the entire Tennessee community and Nashville community. So I'm curious about um, you know, how did that affect you uh, as, a, as a member of the team and, and how did training for the rest of the week go uh, with that on your mind? Yeah, first and foremost, I want to say that all of our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone affected, the whole entire community, and really everybody around the whole entire country because it's an event that should never happen. Um, right whenever we, we ended up hearing and it broke sort of news around our locker room and stuff like that, guys were constantly texting their family members, making sure everything was all right. Um, we're lucky that it was nobody on our team that was necessarily affected in that way but uh, it's just the whole community I think that that's what Nashville has been so strong with though is that everyone rallies together and I think that these tough events that we've had over the course of my four years here whenever we have COVID whenever we have the tornado whenever we have these difficult difficult things that happen to our community I think everyone always rallies together and we come out strong on the other end and so my props to Nashville as a whole, to the club and doing everything that we could to support them um, and just being able to take a step forward because stuff like this doesn't always happen, but when it does, making sure that we come out strong on the other end is our first and foremost uh, responsibility. Yeah, just a quick follow for you, Jack. To, so it's a hard transition, but um, you know, if, Dax uh, does start uh, on Saturday against Orlando. Obviously, he's from Winter Park, so the Orlando area, um, that would be 400 for him all time. MLS starts. Only two other players um, have reached that feat. He needs to be the only active player mm -hmm. to do so. I'm curious, though, to ask you, put you on the spot a little bit, yeah. but um, your favorite Dax stories, you know, your first captain when you were drafted. So uh, what's your favorite Dax story uh, while being in Nashville? Actually, whenever you said whenever I was drafted, I think that is what stuck out first and foremost. So I was able to get in contact with Dax right away and just called him up like, hey, I'm young, I'm Jack, um, nice to meet you. And I'm like, okay, what do I need to do to be like a really good, successful MLS player one day? And just all that advice, like he was able to tell me, you know what, the one thing that... Um, the best ability you can have, Jack, is availability. And it speaks to Dax's duration and how he was able to be at such a high level for so long. It's all the stories. It's the group get-togethers. It's the huddles in the locker room. Dax is always that motivating guy. You always want to play with him. And just having a guy like that on your team and a captain like that for as many years as he's been a captain, it just shows that, you know what, one day I would love to aspire to be like him. And that's sort of one of the biggest compliments that I can give to Dax is that, and I've said it to his face as well, like whenever Dax is on the field, um, you have that fight, you have that hunger, that same energy that he has. We just all aspire to be like that and um, it just speaks to how important he is for this team, for this club, for the city. We are going to transition to Tim Sullivan. Hey Jack, as you um, guys come off of 
of a disappointing result last weekend. What do you do to to kind of I don't know get a reset maybe after a couple um, you know one zero defeats in a row? How do you guys kind of find the confidence again, especially as you go on the road this weekend? Yeah, so this is our no fan. That's Walker, by the way. Um, this is our fourth year running, so we've had highs, we've had lows with this clubs, but. I always like to say, don't ride the roller coaster. Don't let your highs get too high. Don't let your lows get too low. And especially with an experienced group that we have, I think we're really good at staying even keel and just being able to focus on each and every game, each and every rep in practice, and focusing on the little things like video to help us be best prepared for Orlando this upcoming Saturday. Any yeah, yeah, and then what have you seen from Orlando as you do kind of prepare for them specifically? What have you noticed about their first, um, you know, five or six games so far this year? Yeah, they got quite a bit of changes around their, lo their locker room and their roster from the last couple of years that we've played them. I think that this year they're a little bit more dynamic in a way up top. Um, they got versatility, guys that'll run them behind, and they're always a tough team to play. You know, they have very quality opponents and players. I think their center backs are very good, center mids that are incredibly capable and get up and down the field very well. So as long as we stay compact, uh, play as a team, hit them in transition as we always like to do here, I think we're going to uh, do really well against them. So I'm confident in us and our team and being able to get three points up there.